Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and this is a breakdown of the new trailer for Kraven, the latest in Sony's Spider-Man villain series, following the Venom films and Morbius, this one starring Aaron Taylor Johnson as Kraven the Hunter. Let's break down this trailer shot by shot for everything you missed, everything you need to know about Kraven before this movie drops on October 6th, and yeah, we're looking at the Red Band trailer, because we're dirty little jerks. Also, Marvel's Secret Invasion is coming to Disney Plus June 21st. My Easter egg breakdown is coming to the new Rockstars main channel that day around 3 p.m. Eastern. And there are a ton of details and conspiracy theories and Pepe Silvio walls. So you gotta tune in. You're gonna love our analyses. Also, our after show Inside Marvel is coming back to Wednesday mornings and they're gonna be live in person. And it will transition to being a Break Room channel exclusive. So be sure to subscribe to the Break Room as well as subscribe to the Deep Dive channel and to this channel for all kinds of great content. All right, let's get started with this trailer breakdown. Alright, we're in London, and Craven, aka Sergei Kravenov, projects his senses through the streets, giving us a sense of Craven's animalistic instincts as his scent or his perception glides through. He actually could be linking his mind's eye with that of a bird, since connecting with animals this way is part of his power set in this movie. From Craven's first appearance in The Amazing Spider-Man number 15 in 1964, he has had enhanced agility and speed and hunting prowess from a magical herbal potion that he drinks. He was born to a Russian aristocrat from the days of the 1917 revolution, and he was motivated by pride to fulfill a sense of lost nobility. But in this movie, they've definitely changed Craven because, you know, Russell Crowe wasn't alive during the 1917 revolution. And now Sergei is more of an animal rights activist trying to make up for an upbringing in a family of big game hunters led by his father, Nikolai Kravenov, played by Russell Crowe. Let's move on to the next part of the trailer. My son, never show mercy. They are prey. We see Craven sprinting barefoot through London, looking like our man Steve Rogers in the first Captain America film, because these guys are faster without shoes. Shoes slow them down. And with shoes, how would you monkey latch onto that car? God gave us toes for gripping, folks. Actually, in set photos showing Aaron Taylor Johnson, they gave him some slip on Hobbit style feet. Okay, on to the next clip. We are predators. Boys, your mother is dead. She died because you sent her away. She was weak sick in her mind. So yes, Russell Crowe playing Sergei's father, Nikolai Kravenov, the third time he's played a superhero papa after Jor-El and Zeus. He baptizes his son with a cross of blood on his forehead. The blood of the animal they just killed, foreshadowing the importance of these animals' blood to Craven's origin. Now, if you grew up Christian like I did, you know crosses like this is what they put in your forehead in ash on Ash Wednesday. When you get confirmed, it's oil. It's an important religious sacrament, and I think it gives us a glimpse into this family's weird philosophy when it comes to hunting animals. Then in this car, beside young Sergei is his brother Dimitri, aka the Chameleon. The adult version of whom is going to be played by Fred Hetchinger, who is a kid from White Lotus Season 1. In the comics, these two are half-brothers, but in this movie, it seems to indicate that they have the same father and the same mother. Nikolai says that she was weak, sick in the mind. Avenging her could be the deeper motivator in Sergei's warpath. Moving on. You know my business, yes? Power is about strength. All right, we see an opulent castle tucked in the side of a mountain. It kind of looks like the Predjama Castle in Slovenia. There's a room with a stuffed fox on the bar. On the wall that Nikolai pushes Sergei against is a stuffed lion head. I might be wrong, but all this seems like it might be taking place in a heightened underworld with just different rules when it comes to assassins like this. Kind of like John Wick, which might help some of the ultra violence we can expect from this film. Next clip. You will give our enemies an opening. Sergei and Dimitri join Nikolai on a lion hunt, and the lion pounces. Actually, at one point, you can see the lion with both paws wrapped around Sergei, biting his head like a burrito. Now, lions are typically nocturnal predators. They only rarely hunt during the day, like in situations where water in their territories is attracting prey animals that they can eat. But the overwhelming majority of attacks from lions happen at nighttime. So this is some special circumstance and a very special lion. Please notice its bulk and its length is definitely larger than the average lion. This thing is freakishly jacked and lumpy. Kind of like Aaron Taylor Johnson is in this movie. Let's move on. He is weak, like his mother. Leave him. What happened that day? I stared death in the face. 
And for the first time, I saw my true self. As poor Sergei lies wounded, a figure stands over him in the background. Could be Calypso, which is his love interest in this movie, played by Ariana DeBose. You know her. She's the one who said that Angela Bassett did the thing. Although maybe the person in the background here is just someone else in their hunting party. Now, in the shot of Nikolai saying, leave him. The visual itself is actually taken from an earlier moment because we see Sergei standing behind him, looking healthy and fine. But the guy with glasses here is Alexei Sistovich, played by Alessandro Nivola, who in this movie will turn into a version of the rhino. We'll see him at the end of the trailer. But then crazy shit happens. A drop of lion blood falls into Sergei's wound and we see some red blood cell imagery akin to Sam Raimi's opening spider DNA imagery in the 2000 Spider-Man films. We hear the voice of Calypso over this. Calypso is a voodoo priestess in the comics who gives Sergei the potion that enhances his physical strength into that of a jungle cat. But here, it looks like his powers are going to come from this transfusion process. Blood from maybe a genetically engineered lion or a mystical mutant lion mixing in with Sergei's blood. Yes, it's kind of like Catwoman, and yes, it makes no sense. We see a tarot death card with a skeleton on horseback carrying a scythe, maybe part of a ritual that Calypso could do for him. But now when the camera pulls back out of his eye, it glows yellow and the pupil becomes elongated like that of a cat. These cat eyes glow yellow in the dark, like a cat, like the night man. Ah! Ahead of Sergei stepping out of the shadows. Let's move on. Tell me about this hunter. They say he uses a connection with animals to track his prey. And once you're on his list, there's only one way off. Okay, so we see Sergei using his connection with the animals to fight these poachers and big game hunters and other criminal organizations that profit from this kind of thing. So yes, he's a hunter, but an anti-hero hunter, not yet a Spider-Man villain, despite these guys' connection to Spider-Man being really what makes them interesting. But you know, don't tell Sony that. They're gonna keep trying to do this. This video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. No matter what kind of sleeper you are, Helix is a mattress for you. Their sleep quiz makes it easy to find the perfect match. I wanted a medium firm mattress with lumbar support that sleeps cool, so I got matched with the Dusk Lux Helix mattress. I've had my Helix mattress for well over a year now. I love it. I fall asleep faster, I sleep deeper, and I find it easier to share a bed with my partner than ever before. Helix delivers right to your door with free shipping in the US. The mattress comes rolled up in a box and it's super easy to set up yourself. Ain't no way this is about to be a whole mattress right now. Ain't no way, look at this. It's all curled up. And if you're nervous to buy something that you haven't test driven, Helix has a 100 night sleep trial. So you'll have more than three months to make sure that you love it. Helix mattresses also have a 10 year warranty and they offer financing options and flexible payment plans. So a great night's sleep is never far away. I love my Helix mattress. I think you would too. So click the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash rockstars to get 20% off your Helix mattress plus two free pillows. We see Sergey running across the tundra in a blizzard pursued by guys in snowmobiles. And then he uses his connection with wolves to kill them. Then close up of an eye blinking into a yellow bird eye as it spies on these poachers having killed some livestock. Now, while in the comics, Craven is known to tame animals and to work with animals sometimes, it's only been theorized that in some cases he might have a psychic link with them. But no, this movie is making him a full on psychically linked warg, really. Christopher Abbott in this movie is playing the foreigner who is a Spider-Man villain, an assassin, capable of putting someone in a 10 second hypnotic trance by making eye contact with them. I wonder if he'll be able to do that by looking at the animal Craven is controlling and be able to put him in a trance wherever he actually is. On to the next clip. The six of us and only one of you. The six of you now. Okay, Craven confronts the poachers in some old Soviet trucks. He wears a necklace with a lion tooth. In the comics, it's a saber-toothed tiger fang that he wears around his neck. Here, it might be a token from the lion who attacked him. And then our man goes to work, stabbing them in the necks with like a horn and then swinging the cab of the truck to stab the driver and then bites off the nose of the other guy and spits it at us. Yeah, kind of like Danny DeVito in Batman Returns. Craven had already stabbed him in the neck. The guy was already bleeding out. Why do you have to give him a closed casket? Jesus, was the livestock they were poaching your best friends, Craven? Because I think even the animal's ghost would be like, stop, stop, he's already dead. <laughs> stop, he's already dead. Jesus, let's move on. Why do you hunt? My father puts evil into the world. I take it out. 
So Craven tries to justify his violence to Calypso, suggesting that all of his targets are really part of his father's crime organization. I mean, okay, but you could just shoot them. We do see two guys get shot through the head with one bullet, but then he claps a bear trap on a dude's head. He had to walk around with a spring-loaded bear trap ready to go without triggering it, and then at the right moment clamped it on his head. So just a reminder of the scorecard here, folks. Our hero in this movie is biting off noses and clapping bear traps on heads. I mean, look, maybe he's trying to avenge his mom, or maybe we're just not meant to like this character. Because even everyone in this trailer is like, dude, why are you doing this? Honor, you are exactly like our father. Just another man hunting for a trophy. We're murderers. Isn't that what he taught us? Yeah, Dimitri's calling his brother a hypocrite, a man hunting for trophies just like their father. Now, Chameleon was technically Spider-Man's first official villain in the comics, appearing in 1963's Amazing Spider-Man number one. He's known for being able to take anyone's identity, but in this trailer, we don't really see him do anything Chameleon-y yet. Sergei jumps on a desk, stabs a dude in the neck with some kind of tusk. Now I'm wondering if the weapon that he uses to kill each person is either part of the animal they killed or the type of weapon that they were going to use to kill it. Like it could be a kind of poetic justice to give the animal the final say. But again, I think the animal would just be like, just let me live and protect my young and have access to water, please. Next clip. You don't get to do that to me anymore. Mr. Teglin. Where's Mr. Teglin? Oh, you're standing in him. <gasps> Spider! Of course there are spiders in this. Sony also randomly threw a spider in the Venom Let There Be Carnage trailer that ended up not meaning anything. But hey look, now there are several spiders because there's a live action Spider-Verse on the horizon. But there could be more to this because Kraven considers the Spider-Man the one beast that he's always longed to hunt, the one to always slip through his fingers. But here, it's interesting how he looks frightened. In the comics, Kraven kind of becomes obsessed with images of a spider infested asylum because his mother was locked away in one. So this might be the one beast he's afraid of, the one he can't psychically connect with, as spiders have their own psychic link that you gotta be a spider person to connect with. Maybe planting some seeds here for Craven's eventual hatred of Spider-Man coming from an animal he can never connect with and one associated with his mother's suffering. A quick shot of Craven lifting a lion mane vest from the box, his iconic look from the comics, which is shortly after seen wearing in a cave with a flaming spear. His necklace here now has three teeth on it, so maybe after he's killed the people who left him to die, including also his father and Rhino. Could this be the end? of the movie. But here we see the six of us versus one of you guy from earlier. He finds Craven in the office of a Mr. Taglin. On the wall, we see a rhino head, a ram's head, a silver cow head. There's an alligator head on the left shelf, bird statues, a huge ivory tusk in the window. So yeah, Mr. Taglin, a dirt bag. Now you know Craven's going Captain Planet all over his ass. But he takes out this guy with the biggest crossbow I've ever seen. And then he crosses out the name from the book, something OBE Levine, and beside it, Rooster. Now I'm wondering if this could be from a post credit scene and that when we see this list in the movie, there will be other names on it. Names like Michael Morbius, Adrian Toomes, Eddie Brock. Let's move on. You're a goddamn lunatic. Oh, you just figure that out now. In this shot, Craven has some scars on his right arm in the process of healing, and then a hallway fight as he pounces from the walls. I'd say like a lion, but I don't think lions could even get three gallops around the side of a corner of a hallway. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on because it looks like they shot this through gutter water. Okay, on to the last clip. There is an animal in each one of us. Don't you want to know why they call me the rhino? The trailer ends with Alexi revealing himself as the Rhino, but not the kind of Rhino that we've seen before. This guy detaches a tube that might give him the serum that turns into a Rhino or abates it, we're not really sure. But in the comics, Alexei Sistovich received gamma radiation that enhanced his size and strength, and then he wore a polymer suit over it that gave him the appearance of a Rhino. But in 2014's The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Paul Giamatti played a version of the Rhino who wore a mech suit that he stole. Look folks, I'm excited to see Aaron Taylor Johnson as Kraven, but from this trailer, he looks like a psychopath savaging people to an extent no natural animal in the wild would bother to do. And I'm just not really rooting for him at the moment. But again, maybe that's not the point. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe to New Rockstars and The Deep Dive and The Break Room and support us by grabbing some merch at nerdriot.shop. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.